Morning Davidson area momentarily. Okay. As we've been talking about, and friends, we're going to go back into storm mode, and if our uh, director can hear us, there will be a tornado warning issued very soon. It's just past Davidson. It's the storm that we've been talking about. So eventually we're going to have a warning uh, for Iredell and Rowan County. You can get ready for this. So our coverage needs to be concerned. As I understand, eyewitnesses Joe Bruno is actually out there. And Joe, I'm going to have to talk to him to make sure that he's safe so if you can keep our IFB channels open. But we are prepared, friends, and it looks like here we go. There's our warning, and it does include Cabarrus County, just like what we were saying. So up at Kannapolis, this is the big risk area, right in through the heart of downtown Kannapolis, possibly. That's where this guy is rolling past. It has just moved beyond Huntersville and Old Town Huntersville, roughly parallel to Highway 73. Looks like it's moved beyond that, and now it's going to get ready to lift up into Rowan County. This is the storm that we were watching. It was certainly behaving like it wanted to produce some sort of funnel. There is no confirmation of this reaching the ground. At this point, we haven't seen any of them reach the ground, but you can see them. You can see the funnels as it starts to move through. I have not seen anything like really close, like beyond the tree line at this time, but we're waiting for reports of damage. Certainly saw wind damage at least earlier up near Christie Lane in Iredell County. But now as we go on the air and we're going to be simulcasting this, so as we join Channel 9 and our viewers, we're sorry, but we're breaking into programming again because of a very dangerous and potentially life-threatening situation up now Cabarrus and Southern Rowan County. If you've been following us through this, if you've been streaming us on the phone, if you've been watching us that way, we've been worried about this storm as we were covering another one up in Rowan County. And now, as we've been forecasting, this appears to be the case. Live early warning, Doppler 9, Charlotte's most powerful radar, watching the storm right in the northeastern tip of Mecklenburg County and in the western sides of Cabarrus County. Northwest Cabarrus High School, for example, A.L. Brown, anywhere around this area needs to be paying very close attention. Other spots, China Grove, which got hit hard a little while ago, and up and through Enochville and Landis. All of these are communities that are in the path of this potential storm. We right now have meteorologist Matty Baggett. We have Austin Cheney, Chief Meteorologist Steve Udelson. We are all here to get you through this. So our advice to you is let's be calm, let's chill, and let's get ourselves into that area where there is no windows. You can follow us on the phone and you can stream that way, and we will get you through this situation. We're going to go now to Chief Meteorologist Steve Udelson, who is tracking this storm. And Steve, that warning up until 745, and it does include the tip of Mecklenburg County, correct? Yeah, John, it does. And again, this is the same thing we've been talking about for a while now, is, is that cell continues to work its way onto the north and east. Uh, it's moving very slowly. This is a slow mover, moving no more than about 10 miles an hour. I'm going to, I'm going to switch locations here, uh, guys. I didn't kind of do this on the fly. So uh, here we are. So there, you see that again, that flashing red box. That's the polygon that, get, that tells us this is where the potential tornado would be. And it's a pretty large polygon, right? It's a relatively small cell. This is the area that came again right off the lake. See Davidson Concord Road right by Hopewell. It's this area that has that little bit of a hook. And I've been saying this for two hours now. Just because a storm has a hook does not mean it's producing a tornado. I mean, research has shown over the years about a third of these will literally produce a tornado that will reach down to the ground. But it's something you have to keep an eye on, and it's still capable of producing uh, damaging wind threat for sure over the next little bit. So, again, let's take a look inside uh, and, and get inside the storm and see what the velocity looks like. Well, at least we're seeing a little bit of, of some sort of velocity data, but not much. Just a little bit of green here by the Hopewell area. Again, what I'm looking for Two colors, red and green, next to each other. That would tell me we got something going on. Now, way up high, this is about six, 7,000 feet. That area I circled, you do see red and green next to each other. So this is happening 6,500, 7,000 feet above the ground. Question is, does it actually reach the ground? That could well not happen, but it is still capable of producing damaging wind. Let's go back inside the storm and see what we can see as far as wind velocity goes. Get a little bit tighter in here uh, and get an idea on wind speeds. These, these shades of green, that is not much wind at all. So, I mean, this is not a big wind maker by any stretch. It is really a very heavy rain maker and the potential for a damaging wind gust uh, as, the, as the, this part of the cell works your way. Now, it is moving slowly. I mentioned this before. Moving at about 10 to 15 miles an hour, 
that's going to become a different issue. You get very heavy rain over the same areas time and time again, potential for some flooding. So let's give you an idea as to where this is distance-wise from uh, different locations. Enochville, you're actually not that far from this. Uh, that's only about seven miles out, and it's moving about 15 miles an hour, so they give you about half an hour, 20 minutes to half an hour before this circulation comes over you. It would be more of, again, damaging wind threat than anything else, as well as that very heavy rain. I mentioned the rain rates before, pretty excessive, where you see these deep shades of red. Those are two plus, two to three inch, four inch per hour rain rates. That'll cause localized street flooding, which as we've been saying all along, over the next few days as this situation plays out, will be the greatest threat. It continues to lift onto the east, northeast, about 15 miles an hour. I mean, it's making a beeline to the northeast. All these cells are. And let's widen this out a little bit and go back uh, in time. And you can see the same areas getting hit time and time again. So, again, that's something that is, is of a different concern than severe weather for sure. But you don't want to minimize a flooding risk. And we've already seen two to three inches of rain just in the last few hours from this. And you know the way how quickly we can see flash flooding. So this will become a bigger concern. Again, the area that we're keeping a very close eye on, this is right on the mecklenburg Cabarrus County line. You see right here, this is, you, you clearly can see that hook, and, and that's got the National Weather Service's attention for sure. We take a look inside here. Again, I'm looking at the radar information. I'm not seeing signs of rotation, uh, uh, and, and really uh, at the ground for sure. Uh, as you go up into the atmosphere, slightly better uh, rotation. You can see right here, red and green near each other, but as I mentioned, that's a good 6,500, 7,000 feet above the ground. It's between Mount Morin and Dewey's, and that is right on the county line. And it's going to be heading to the north and east. A damaging wind threat for sure. So again, with all these warnings, and you probably see them on your phones lighting up too, what does that mean for you? Just stay inside. Be smart. Be safe. Get as many walls between you and the outdoors as possible. And again, we'll just have to keep an eye on this over the next 30 minutes or so as it continues to lift onto the northeast through far southwest portions of Rowan County. So it's coming out of Mecklenburg County, northwest portions of Cabarrus County are next, and eventually southwest Rowan County. And that's from this cell right here and this area that we're keeping an eye on just northwest of Deweese and just southeast uh, of Mount Morn. Okay, all right, so we have, we have storm cam on the way. It's in northwest portions of Cabarrus, uh, near, not far from Kannapolis. So, again, we'll keep an eye on this. Here we are. Uh, so there's I-85, and you can see just dry roads right now. But, uh, again, we're going to keep an eye on this because it's heading toward the Kannapolis area or just north uh, on 85. So if our crew can be cognizant of that, you see they're coming up on 73 in Huntersville. Uh, so, again, that, that is, uh, is on I-85. I believe, and then again, we'll watch the cell as it continues to work its way northeast out of Mecklenburg County through uh, extreme uh, south, uh, northwest portions of Cabarrus County and eventually southwest Rowan County. That's the area of great, uh, greatest concern. As I mentioned before, I am not seeing signs of rotation per se, so let, let's get a better idea. Uh, and again, uh, we're not picking up signs of, of ominous rotation, we're just seeing Gusty wind threat for sure. I'm going to change the radar source again. So basically what I'm doing is we have access to all these different radars and giving you all the information and we're analyzing it together here as this live information comes in. So the, the storm itself, the worst part of it is literally sitting on the mecklenburg cabarrus County line. It is about to cross the line into Cabarrus and eventually southwest portions of Rowan. Enochville, China Grove, are the two largest communities that are in the path of that circulation, or at the very least, the heavy rain and damaging wind threat. And again, there's no lightning with this, oddly enough, or very limited lightning. There could well be some uh, small hailstones with this. Typically, those shades of magenta, indicative of some hail, two inch per hour rain rates. And I mentioned this earlier. If you take a look at the rain that we have seen so far from this, and notice this area has gotten a lot larger uh, over the last little bit. Those deep shades of green, that is a rainfall estimate by radar of about two inches, two to three inch rain uh, estimates from Denver to Westport, also in the Mount Morn area, just east of Mooresville. So again, we're gonna sort of transition from a severe weather mode to the potential anyway, for some flooding over the next little bit as we go through this evening, later tonight, and certainly over the next couple of days. This will not be a widespread severe uh, issue. 
You can see that tornado warning, the flashing red box. That's why you may have seen it on your phone. You may have been alerted if you have a weather radio. That tornado warning up till 745. Again, I'm hopeful that we can cancel this warning early. Uh, this, this looks to be the last of the storms that have that signature of a hook. So that would be certainly good news so we can get on with our night. But at the bottom line is heavy rain and damaging wind is still the potential from this. And that's why we're going to stay on the air until we deem that that's no longer a risk. I'm going to put a track on that part of the storm as it continues to work its way northeast, past Deweese, past Enochville, past uh, Kannapolis uh, over the next little bit. And again, we're talking about wind speeds uh, of easily 40 miles an hour or more as that continues to work its way toward Landis, reaching you about 805, so that's still a long way out. China Grove by about 815. So again, this warning is up uh, till uh, 730. Uh, for, for the uh, 745 this evening. So we just have to keep an eye on this as it continues to work its way to the north and east. Let's check in with uh, John Ahrens, see if we have any new information from our colleagues at the National Weather Service on damage. Yeah, no uh, damage here at, at this time. And again, this has all been indicated by radar with nothing uh, confirmed here. But certainly, even if we're not seeing a tornado, these guys are certainly bringing that momentum with them. And some very strong winds, so tree damage down, certainly a possibility. And again, as we've seen with some of these photographs, if that guy hits the ground, then we're in trouble. We've seen plenty of funnels. Wouldn't be surprised if we get some funnels out of this one. If it hits the ground, that's when we're in danger. And certainly as we watch the momentum of this guy push into Kannapolis and Southern China Grove, there's concerns. Now, meteorologist Austin Cheney can actually go inside and see it from a perspective as if we could get a microscope inside the storm we're looking for rotation. Yeah, and so this one's actually interesting. I feel like all evening long we've come to this view of the radar and we've showed you just a lot of red showing that all that wind is moving in the same direction and we haven't been able to really pick up some rotation. Steve was just showing you a zoomed in portion of the radar on Deweese and that little appendage or that hook that looked like it was hanging down below the storm. Well, now when we've tilted it up into the 3D mode, you kind of got to look through the glare here, but you see this green that's probably between, I don't know, four to 5,000 feet off the ground here embedded within this red. That means that we do actually have some rotation that we're able to pick up with this mode of the radar. And it, even though we've had a couple different tornado warnings tonight, we haven't really seen that. So this tornado warning that is currently now in effect for Cabarrus, Iredell, Mecklenburg, Rowan counties, still take it seriously. Even though we haven't had any uh, evidence of debris being lofted into the atmosphere or anything crazy, there's a reason that these tornado warnings are coming out. So if you get that notification on your phone, either from our WSOC weather app or from the emergency alert system letting you know that you're under a tornado warning, you still got to respect it and take it seriously. So again, if you get that, lowest level of the home or the building that you're in, if you have a basement, that's the best place to be. You want to place as many walls between the outside of the storm or the outside of your house and where your shelter at as possible so that if we do get any lofted debris from that you'd be able to stay safe from that. But again, as we look at the velocity mode of the radar here in 3D, again, a lot of splotches and colors on your screen, but this is zoomed in right on that area near Deweese where we've had that hook look on the reflectivity mode of the radar, and there certainly is some evidence of at least a little bit of wind shear with this that could potentially tighten up. Let's go back over to John Aarons. John, any, uh, I heard some beeps and buzzes over there. <laughs> Well, Austin, you know, and, and uh, Steve's going to chime in on this as well. And Austin, we'll love to get your thoughts here too. Uh, we got something going on as far as a boundary. Because if you look past that guy, as we are waiting for that one to weaken, look at this. There's another one emerging just near Huntersville again. And now nothing confirmed out of this, but we're just letting you know that these guys are running into something in the environment. Steve is checking that out now. That makes these guys literally explode. So it starts out tame, and then all of a sudden... It starts to take off, and they've been following that pattern very similar to what happened in Lake Norman that moved up into China Grove and Salisbury earlier today. And now we got another guy right around the same spot that are just thriving off of something. And really, when you look at computer models and you look at all the technology, you try to figure out what's going on there, you have to do a little digging here. So that's what Steve is doing right now, along with Austin, who's just jumped in. But there's some sort of boundary, whether it be a moisture boundary where there's a little more humidity in one spot compared to another, or maybe it's a little cooler there compared to another. But there's something going on that's allowing these guys to just thrive in that particular spot and then die out. 
That's the situation that we're in. And because of that, we're seeing those funnels develop. And again, we're not really can confirm if they are hitting the ground, but we're at least seeing them start to uh, continue. Now, the Weather Service has let us know that they are going to continue this tornado warning until 745, so that's why we're on the air at Channel 9. We know that there's programming going on right now. We just the national news, and uh, we will get back to it as soon as we deem that it is safe. On Eyewitness News TV 64, of course, the news is going on, and we hope to, once the storm goes, to go back to Evan Dunneman for the rest of today's news. But we will stay on until we deem it safe. Now, Steve, I'd just love to get your thoughts on what you think is happening at that spot that's allowing these guys to take off. No question, John. There's what we would call a boundary, whether or not it's wind, whether it's the amount of humidity around there. It's not temperature. Our temperatures are all about the same. But there's really there's been something going on between I-85 and I-40 because the same area has been hit time and time again. As John said, these storms strengthen. They look like they have signs of rotation, and then they weaken. But at the very least, they are putting down really intense rainfall, uh, intense rainfall rates. And then you start looking at some of these totals. It's really starting to add up. There's your storm cam. Uh, and again, you just see the dark clouds starting to look menacing out there. Uh, they're going to try to catch that storm. Heaviest rain right now between Cornelius and Huntersville, right on 77. That's obviously going to slow down driving for sure. Rain rates here, one to as much as three. There's a four-plus inch per hour downpour. There may be some small hailstones with this. And again, as far as wind goes, and of course we have that tornado warning. By the way, Mecklenburg County has been dropped from the tornado warning. The storm has passed. So you can, you, I know you're seeing it on the bottom of the screen. Mecklenburg is done. Iredell County still under the tornado warning. We still have southwest portions of Rowan and northwest portions of Cabarrus County. It's up till 745. Basically, Cox Mill, Kannapolis, China Grove, and Mooresville. Draw that little uh, polygon, and that's where the area of action is. And it's all because of this. That storm that we saw is now just west of Deweese. And again, we talked about that hook. And again, you know, we've had tornado warnings now for two plus hours and we've had pictures of funnels, nothing of anything on the ground. And more importantly, no reports of tornadic type damage. We've had reports of a couple of trees and limbs down, but that's been the worst of it so far. And, and I'm really I'm praying it stays that way as we go through this evening. But I am hopeful this is more bark than bite. And we're talking about very heavy rain. And I do not want to underestimate the flooding risk, because, again, we're starting to see these rainfall rates pick up in areas that have already seen torrential downpours. So, again, the tornado warning remains in effect. I'll take another look inside the storm. Again, it's, it's really, really weak rotation is what we're looking at right here. You see a little bit of green, a little bit of red in that area, and, and that's the area we've been keeping an eye on. But they're not next to each other, and these colors are not bright. That tells me the wind speeds are not that big. It's been so humid outside, and typically in a situation when the atmosphere is like this, it is really hard to get a spin-up tornado out of this. But again, it sure looked menacing on radar, and uh, the National Weather Service did what they had to do, keeping everyone safe by issuing these tornado warnings. Damaging wind for sure, heavy rain, you bet. But again, as far as actual tornadic damage, we have yet to see one report of anything like that. Uh, as again, as you look your way back across the lake, that John was talking about this one too, this, uh, this one behind it. This too is starting to get a little bit of an appendage just southwest. It's on Hambright Road, uh, just southwest of Huntersville. Uh, this right here, that's what the radar is seeing. We call that an appendage. That's the start of a hook. And as I've been saying, it, a hook can appear on radar, but typically only about a third of these will actually produce something on the ground. We've seen a number of hooks so far. Uh, but again, at this point, I have not seen anything in, uh, that looks like tornadic type damage. We widen this out a little bit. We're going to keep an eye on that one because that one looks like it's intensifying, whereas the one to the north looks like it's starting to weaken a little bit. Where the tornado warning is in effect, this is far northwestern now portions of Cabarrus County. So Mecklenburg County, done with the tornado warning. Cabarrus, Iredell, Rowan, as you see at the bottom of your screen, up till 745. This cell again lifting northeast. It's a really slow mover. It's moving 10 to 15 miles an hour, which is pretty typical. When the atmosphere is this humid, you've been outside. There's no wind. So, uh, again, it's, it's not being pushed around very quickly, and that will intensify the, tor the, uh, the flooding risk, I believe, as we work our way through this evening. Let's put a track on this as it continues to work its way to the north and east, arriving in China Grove just after 8, Landis by about 8.10, Kannapolis about 8.17. I mean, that's a long way out. 
uh, again, very slow moving storm. It's going to take a while before it continues to work its way onto the east. This back storm is actually starting to catch up to the initial one. John, I'm wondering, is the National Weather Service saying anything about that other storm that's yeah, just south of Huntersville? Yeah, yeah, nothing. I just uh, am chatting with them uh, right now here, Steve. Uh, yeah, it, it's crazy, but we're not out of the woods just yet. So we canceled the warning for Mecklenburg, right? So Cabarrus, Iredell, Rowan. So we're watching you guys very carefully, specifically China Grove and, and Kannapolis and Enochville. If you live in those towns, land is included, you need to be inside, you need to be away from windows. Now, Cornelius, Huntersville, you're thinking I'm done, right? Wrong. We're not ready to let go of this, and there may eventually be yet another warning up in Mecklenburg County. Uh, so we're just keeping an eye on that possibility. As Steve's been talking about, there is some sort of battery, and we're actually going to go in depth and explain what's happening here in just a little bit. But the bottom line is we cannot let our guard down in Mecklenburg County, specifically North Mech up and through Cornelius, those spots, downtown Cornelius, you need to be ready. And Old Town Huntersville, right along Highway 115, is where we have, again, another menacing storm that very well might be trying to rotate. We're not over just yet. Now, the particular cell that we were watching that prompted all the business earlier, Kannapolis, that spot, that guy looks a little bit weaker. So there's something going on that gets this guy really revved up. And then it calms down. I want to go to meteorologist Austin Cheney, who's taking a look at what's happening in the atmosphere that might be causing all of this. Yeah, and we don't really show you maps that look like this a lot on TV, but we're just trying to go through all of the raw data right now to figure out what could potentially be causing this. And so there's, there's two potential things right now. Uh, surface analysis shows that a warm front is trying to lift northward. And so that may have, even though you're seeing a straight line drawn across your screen right here, that front may have gotten hung up somewhere right north of the Charlotte metro across the Lake Norman area. And even though it's only a subtle difference in dew points from 60 69 degrees south of the front to about 65 degrees north of the front, that little moisture difference is enough to create a boundary. And so the storms may be hitting that, and there may be just enough wind shear to tighten these storms up enough to make them look mean enough to produce a tornado warning. But we haven't really seen a lot of ground truth to any of that actually hitting the ground. The other thing that we're looking at here are the different wind directions. Now this is at the surface, so uh, a loft that may be a little bit stronger, but we're finding some of these station plots here showing winds coming out of the east at about five knots or five, you know, a little above five miles an hour hitting the mountains and perhaps that is creating just a little bit of wind shear up north of the Charlotte Metro to again work with that boundary to create enough shear for these storms to rotate a bit but we're, we're kind of scratching our heads wondering what in the world is, is causing all this because the atmosphere is waterlogged there is not a tremendous amount of wind shear uh, to produce tornadoes just to throw some numbers at you here there may be say 10 15 miles an hour of wind shear in the atmosphere when we're talking big time severe weather days we could be talking 60 to 70 miles an hour of wind shear when you go up in the atmosphere so the ingredients don't really appear to be there but the storms certainly doing something a little strange let's go on over to john and see if you have any latest with the latest scan of the radar well, and you know also and this is why you know we we say a lot of times carolina thunderstorms carolina tornadoes are very different they're not the guys that go up you know 50 60 thousand feet in the air they don't do that. These storms are like 4,000, 5,000 feet up, right? Almost like in the time that a plane takes off and gets up into like its travel spot, you've already missed the tornado. So, so these guys are small, but they're certainly capable of major damage. Even in an EF zero intensity, you're talking about winds past 60 miles an hour. So they mean business if they're able to rotate and hit the ground. As Austin was mentioning, there's something that gets these guys going, and at this point, uh, we're seeing it trying again in the Huntersville area. But right now, the warned storm is for Cabarrus, and we will stay on the air until we think the Cabarrus threat is over. And we just want to let you know, it's possible that we could rev right back up if Mecklenburg is able to materialize. Let's go to Chief Meteorologist Steve Udelson, who's analyzing both storms in real time. Yeah, John, it looks as if the lead storm, the warned storm, is weakening once again just mm -hmm. northwest of Deweese, not far from Enochville. Again, there's the radar, I and mean, we get an update every minute with a live radar. The area that we were most concerned about right here, far southern part of that storm. That's where the hook was about 20 minutes, half an hour ago. 
puts us back into motion. Clearly, you can see a hook, right? And then it kind of just disappears. That's been the calling card of these. They spin up, they spin down in the middle part of the atmosphere, five, six, eight thousand 8,000 feet up, not down at the ground. We have yet to get one report of tornadic type damage. We have seen reports of funnel clouds. We've seen pictures of funnel clouds. Doesn't mean there's a tornado on the ground. The other cell John was talking about is just now southwest of Huntersville. It's almost up to I-77. Uh, and again, this is an area uh, that's obviously very populated. We don't want anybody to get hurt in this, so we want everybody inside. Heavy rain, notice there's no lightning with this. I mean, it is a pure tropical atmosphere. These rain rates are incredible. You know, two, three, four inch per hour rain rates. And as I've been saying all along, I think this is gonna get down as more of a flooding risk than anything else because areas that have been hit are getting hit time and time again. This is the third round for the Huntersville uh, southern end of the lake in, in Met County. The third time this evening we've had some heavy rain and there's actually one forming now crossing Highway 16. That'll hit the other side of the lake it looks like. It's moving more northeast. There is definitely a boundary of some kind here. Austin showed a warm front. That's probably the culprit here uh, in, in what's causing these things to really develop more than they probably should uh, and, and get some signs of rotation. But again, what's going to be happening as we go through this evening, that warm front's lifting to the north, and that will hopefully take the energy away. As far as what's going on for the rest of the evening, I want to quickly give you a view of our feature cast. Notice, typically, mid-June night, sunset comes, these storms flame out. That will not be the case tonight. We will continue to see blossoming showers and storms deep into the night, likely to midnight and beyond. Not necessarily severe, but again, we're talking about the potential anyway for some localized flooding. The greatest risk for flooding, Ashwatauga, Avery, Burke, Caldwell, and Alexander counties, mountains and foothills. This is where four plus inches of rain will likely fall between now and say Friday evening. The watch is up till Wednesday evening. I, have a full, uh, I fully expect that to be extended uh, as, we, as we continue to see this uh, pattern unfold over the next couple days. That tornado warning still in effect now. Cabarrus, Rowan, far southeastern Iredell County. Looks like that threat is past Mooresville. It's almost to the county line. So again, uh, Iredell County will be coming out of that in just a moment. And this, this next storm is actually caught up to the first one. Uh, it's interesting. Just watch these things kind of just mold into one. So what's going to be happening is this back storm start to rob some of the energy of the front storm as it continues to weaken. So this one may actually intensify a little bit more. Man, it's putting down some really heavy rain uh, as we continue to work its way right along I-77, Cornelius, Donna, Huntersville. I know it's not a, a large area, but uh, it's a very populated area and an area that right now is looking at rain rates uh, pretty excessive on the order of about four, four inches per hour in some locations. I mean, there's two, nearly three inch per hour rain rate that will cause localized flooding. And to get back on that flooding bandwagon, I just wanted to give you an idea. Again, we're keeping an eye on these shades of yellow. Those are two and a half to three inches of rain in the last three hours. Mm -hmm. Again, it's radar measured, but nonetheless, uh, again, we're talking about a tremendous amount of rain and the flooding concern will do nothing but rise as we continue to see these very heavy downpours come down. Again, we, we take, the, uh, take that off and again, go back to our radar. Uh, really, guys, it looks like this tornado, the tornadic cell, what was being warned as a tornadic cell, is really weakening uh, and it's almost merging with the storm behind it. So I would not in, uh, anticipate another tornado warning out of this part of the cell. We'll keep an eye out on the southern end. Still no, no, nothing glaring as far as radar goes. We'll take a look inside and take a look at velocity data. I'm actually seeing a little bit of red next to green here, not far from Joplar. There's 485, there's Huntersville and Highway 115. So again, this is an area that is showing at least a few thousand feet up signs of rotation. So again, this is an area we have to keep a close eye on. It's not under tornado warning, it's just an area we're keeping, an area of concern, if you will, as we continue to watch it. Let's go back to the radar, and it's right, that area that I just showed you is where that little hook is. So again, that, that, that raises my antenna that we're gonna have to keep an eye on this. And again, we may, we may need to continue uh, with coverage uh, beyond the, the 640, uh, 745 if that happens. Again, looking at different radar sources, we're analyzing this information together. This is again coming from Greer, South Carolina. The radar at that point is about 7,000 feet above the ground. Middle part of the atmosphere, yeah, we're seeing signs of rotation from Caldwell through Huntersville. On the southern end of this, nothing. 
up in Rowan. It's starting to get too far away, frankly. But uh, this is a cell that we're going to have to be very close eye on over the next uh, 15, 20 minutes to see if it can get better organized. Right now, I don't see any sign of, of serious rotation. I'm going to take a look inside of here and, again, get a better idea. Again, I'm not seeing any, any markers of any kind that say, hey, that's, uh, we're seeing something forming. But at the very least, very heavy rain and another batch of gusty wind pushing through Huntersville. And it's going to be heading in the same direction as that storm that's now tornado warned over Cabarrus County, now moving into Rowan as well, where that tornado warning is up. Again, that flashing red box, that polygon, that is where the tornado warning is up. That cell weakening dramatically. The cell behind it seems to be intensifying. Uh, again, you clearly can, can see that hook. We're getting an update now uh, on the right. Anything from the Weather Service, John, on that? They're watching it. I've been talking to them, uh, and, you know, they were saying, well, it looks like it's weakening. But, you know, we, we've been looking at it, and this is a live situation. Uh, it, it's, it's showing signs uh, of strength again. So we just have to watch this very carefully, and our plans are right now. We're on until 745 at least, but I'm just allowing for the possibility uh, maybe that picking up into whatever is going on up in the Huntersville area. While we have the moment here, there are, of course, other storms here, and we want to make sure we don't lose our focus. Also, you know, in York County, there's some very heavy rain, and in Matthews and on the east side of Charlotte, like this is not tornadic, but we want you to just be safe and just to put you at ease if you live in those spots. If you're wondering, like, well, wait a minute, I live in York and there's nothing going on. Well, you know what, friends? Uh, we want to make sure everybody is safe, and that's what we do here at Channel 9. And so we want to make sure our viewers up in Huntersville, Cornelius, Davidson, near Deweese, and Kannapolis are taken care of. So, friends, even if you may not be in the path, uh, we want to make sure that everyone is safe. Now we're going to go to meteorologist Austin Cheney. You see, what I'm looking at is from top to bottom. Uh, Austin can actually look at it with our technology kind of like from eye level. And so that's what we're going to do. Austin? Yeah, and uh, for the time being, I still actually have it in the, in the flat mode here, but I've got it in a different mode. We're going to show you a couple different things, all right? So... We've been talking about how that storm that's up there uh, moving towards China Grove is starting to... Hey, guys, a new tornado warning yeah. just came out right yeah, there. Yeah, so uh, If we could tell you real quick, and uh, we're getting assembled here. So yeah. that's the one we've been tracking, Iredell, Cabarrus, Mecklenburg, Rowan. It's that cell that we've been watching up near uh, Cornelius and Huntersville and Enochville, and that warning is up until 830 as that storm continues to move at about northeast at five miles an hour. Unbelievable. So here's the spot that we're looking at, and it's the same areas, right? So if you live in these spots, just stay where you're at. Hopefully you're away from windows, right? You're in the lowest level of your home, and hopefully your phone is charged up and you're able to stream us as we cover this. But we've been watching these guys right on a line. We've been talking about it all night from Huntersville, essentially on up into Kannapolis, Enochville, and Salisbury. That's where they're thriving. That's where there's something going on. It looks like a wind shift, some sort of boundary between winds where we have some winds going in one direction, others going in a different one, and that's what's sparking these tornadoes. So if you live up in Enochville or if you live up in Kannapolis, it's status quo. You just can't do anything just yet. You're not at a safe spot. Make sure you're staying where you are, protecting yourselves, and we'll get you through this. As we're going to be on the air at, at this point, at least for another 20 minutes to a half an hour, until we know that this guy is done. Essentially what has happened, and Steve was talking about this a little while ago, they've emerged to create a one really strong, wicked thunderstorm packed with rain and lightning as it marches to the east. But the real dangerous part of this, the life-threatening part of this storm, is just southeast of Huntersville in northern Mecklenburg County. And that's why Mecklenburg is back under the warning. It's traveling. It's right now south of Highway 73. It's just right up near, uh, for a, a spot that uh, there's Frankie uh, a Fun Park. I think it's right around that spot is where I would suggest that that guy is, right over Highway 115, moving to the north and east. Chief Meteorologist Steve Yudelson is on it with a track with the latest, and we also have Storm Cam. Steve? Yeah, John, you see the Storm Cam on the left side of your screen. Uh, this is the hook we've been talking about, Holbrook Road. That's the area of, of concern. This is just southeast of uh, Huntersville. Clearly, I mean, really clearly, you can see the hook. Uh, again, we've been watching this for the last half hour. So it's not a surprise. And again, no reports of tornadic-type damage, but there will be some damaging wind out of this, I'm, I would bet you for sure. Uh, so we want you inside, away from windows. Rain rates, again, two and a half, three and a half inches per hour. The potential for some hailstones. That's what these shades of magenta typically tell us uh, on the radar. So again... 
This is the real deal as far as severe thunderstorms go. They're saying it's a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado. Uh, and again, that would be the best way to describe it. As far as where is it, where is it heading, again, we're going to widen this out a little bit. So I want to show you where the tornado warnings are. The initial tornado warning is up, well, it expires in two more minutes. That was for southwest portions of Rowan, northwest portions of Cabarrus County. The new tornado warning extends from Cornelius and Huntersville just north of University City to Concord, back to Kannapolis. So that's the area, this new polygon that we're most concerned about. And it's all for this, this cell. And most importantly, this little hook down at the bottom here. That's what we're keeping a very close eye on. We take a look inside, we're gonna analyze this together. So now we're starting to see, unlike any other times uh, during the day today, a little more sign of rotation lower down toward the ground. We're seeing some shades of red, we're seeing some shades of green. Now these are relatively muted colors, which tell me that it's fairly weak. Just northeast of Joplin, we're getting a radar update. Again, it updates every minute. That didn't really tighten up much, but we're getting a slightly brighter shade of green here. So this is clearly something going on here, just north of 485, just east of Huntersville. Uh, again, I want to look at a different radar source. Same sort of thing. You're seeing green and red, but sort of a mishmash together. It, it hasn't really tightened up into what you would call a tornado just yet, but it is capable of producing damaging wind for sure. And as again, we widen this, uh, we're gonna look at our, our velocity once again. Again, this is something we we'll have to keep a very close eye on as far as rotation goes and the threat for damage. Now this is a different radar source. It's putting it in a slightly different place. It's slightly higher in the atmosphere, east of Caldwell, east of Huntersville. That's Highway 115. Uh, there's Highway 73. Uh, Davis and Concord Road out here, uh, Sam Fur Road back in Meck County. Uh, so again, this is the area we're keeping a very close eye on. Now here, with this particular radar, and it's shooting at about, again, 6,500 feet up, you do see green literally next to red. And that's what we've been missing all day. So at least in the middle part of the atmosphere, we have something trying to form here. No question about that. And again, we're going to have to keep an eye on that and see if it continues over the next little bit. Go back to the, our own live radar, a little closer to the action. Again, sitting at about 2,000 feet up maybe. You see some rotation near, uh, again, between Caldwell and just east of Huntersville. So again, there is definitely some circulation here. And here it is, getting close to Wallace Cox Roads, getting close to Cox Mill. That rotation continuing to work its way to the, I'm gonna put this into motion, see if we can notice a trend. Clearly, as it comes across 77, it is getting better organized. You see green and red getting closer and closer together. And again, it's coming close together, not far from Cox Mill. So there's, four, there's 85, Cox Mill, Dries, east of Huntersville. This is the area of greatest concern. That's the area where we're seeing signs of rotation. Again, as far as reports on the ground, to this point we have none. It is capable of producing damaging wind for sure. And let's not forget about the heavy rainfall because again, we've been talked about, we've talked numerous times Okay, so we're, we're going to uh, head out to Joe Bruno. Joe Bruno. He is now live in Storm Cam, not far from uh, Enochville. Joe, what are you seeing out there? Yeah, hey, Steve. Uh, we uh, just got into Enochville a couple of minutes ago. I'll give you a look at Storm Cam here. Uh, off and on rain, we did see one tree that looked like it came down. Uh, we're going to turn right here on this street, and uh, you'll see it on uh, the left-hand side of your screen. Uh, in a, a short while. Uh, we also were at the Enoch Volunteer Fire Department when they started uh, sounding the tornado warning siren. That thing is loud. Uh, warning people, of course, of uh, the weather conditions and this warning that has been now put into effect. Enochville, I've been listening to you guys the last hour and a half. It re really has been like the center of this storm. This, they haven't been out of the woods for any of the warnings that have popped up. It seems like all of the uh, the radar and the storms have been heading in this direction. So this is really uh, the key area that I, I've heard you guys say really needs to take notice of all of these warnings. But uh, right now you can see, uh, you know, wet roads, a uh, little bit of drizzle, but not uh, too much of an issue right now. Certainly, though, as you guys have been uh, talking about for uh, the past couple of hours here, this is the community that really needs to be on alert and uh, keep an eye on things because things can change quickly.
Go, uh, John here. Uh, what road are you on specifically? I want to make sure you are safe here and out of harm's way. Are you out of uh, your? Are you on 152? Uh, we're on North Enochsville Avenue. Uh, just saw lightning, which yeah. is interesting because uh, I know we haven't seen a lot of uh, lightning with uh, the, the okay. storms this uh, evening. Okay, I want you to be really careful where you're at. Uh, you, are you traveling north? Yes, we okay. are traveling north at the moment. All right, okay. I, I would not move uh, much farther than you are right now because that storm and with the potential. here's that tree I was talking about. Yeah. Okay, Joe. I, I, all right, if you can hear me, Joe, I want you to just kind of back down That's where you are, slow down. That storm is just literally northwest of you, and the computer, you know, with the wind speed coming out of this and the rain rates, our technology is trying to pick up and stay on top of this guy. So that's where we have a dangerous situation. Joe Bruno in a safe spot, but if we've told him not to go any farther at this time as it crosses Highway 3. Let's go to meteorologist Austin Cheney, who's actually looking at the rotation inside, if you're looking at it like, like from the human eye, looking inside the storm. Yeah, so what we've done now is we've tilted the storm up into the 3D, and I've actually got a meteorologist just Maddie Bag and helping drive this for us. So Maddie, let's go ahead and tilt this up a little bit more. Look down close to the ground here, okay? We've got this green starting to show on up. So really for the first time this evening, uh, we've been able to, to see some evidence in the mid-levels of the atmosphere of some decent rotation here. So this thunderstorm, it's got a new tornado warning on. It certainly is capable of producing a, um, a tornado if this rotation is able to couple up a little bit better. The height of this above the ground is probably only about 2,000 feet or so, if not less. We've got a good perspective on this from the terminal Doppler radar at the Charlotte Douglas Airport here. So uh, certainly a dangerous thunderstorm. That's why the brand new tornado warning uh, just came out on this one. Let's see if we can get, uh, John, you have a storm track on this one? With yeah, we'll uh, go ahead and put that on there as it lifts up to the north and east. Uh, certainly we're watching spots uh, like Enochville and Huntersville in the path, or I should say just past Huntersville, up near uh, or right around the Kannapolis area and Landis is where the biggest concerns are out of this particular cell. But as we watch it kind of back bend a little bit, uh, still, you know, it's kind of the energy is just kind of splitting apart just a little bit with that one spot pushing east and the other one going now more towards uh, the biggest concerned area of Enochville. So, yeah, I'll go ahead and put a track on this particular storm. And as we watch it, it's the problem is this guy's only moving about five miles an hour. So China Grove, you're not still talking about this guy getting to the heart of you in another half hour or so. So we still have a long ways to go, and spots along Poplar Tent also need to be. They're on the southern end of that guy. They need to be ready, but even here, you're talking about another 10 minutes. So upper parts of Cabarrus County and southern Rowan County, you still got to wait a while. This guy's moving very slowly. So you got to wait until this thing passes. you got probably another half hour at least to wait. Let's go to Chief Meteorologist Steve Udelson looking inside with Charlotte's most powerful radar. Yeah, John, and so I'm going to be looking at trends here, and the trend has been, we've talked about this, where we're getting training of thunderstorms. Same area getting hit time and time again. That train is about to end. I think this is going to be the last of the storms, at least for a little bit. We're going to get a break as we go through the rest of this evening, which is obviously welcome news. Again, that red flashing polygon, the area under the tornado warning, I'd be most concerned uh, if I'm living between Kannapolis and Huntersville and then north and east of that. Southern end of that box looks like we're going to be pretty much A-OK -okay away from that uh, tornadic risk or any damaging wind threat. As far as the, where's the heaviest wind, again, right now, right along Highway 73 and then to the south, just east of Huntersville, there's what's left of that hook. And again, uh, we've looked inside this numerous times. We're going to do it again. We analyze the radar once a minute. And again, I'm, I'm seeing... And now it looks, does not look as good as it even did just a few moments ago. So that's why we have to keep checking in with this stuff. What we're looking for when we look at velocity data is wind speed, wind direction. The brighter the shade of color, stronger the wind. Getting another radar update literally as we talk here. So these shades of green, relatively muted. These shades of red, relatively muted. That's right along Highway 73. So this is the area where there's signs of rotation relatively down near the ground, but it's weak and it's broad. It's not tight, what we call a tight rotation, which would be tornadic. Still, all that said, that tornado warning remains in effect till 8.30, and keep in mind, we could see damaging wind at the very least out of this over the next half hours. It continues to slide to the northeast. I'm going to put a track on it. Let's take this off and put a track on that entire line as it continues to work its way to the northeast. As John said, 
I mean, you've been outside today. It's exceptionally humid, right? Well, there's also been virtually no wind to speak of. So this storm is moving no more than about 10 or so miles an hour. It'll take till 9 o'clock to reach Kannapolis at its current rate. I'm hopeful by then it's weakened to the point where it's just heavy rain. I have lightning turned on. You see two strikes, and I don't even see the strikes within this cell. And that typically is what happens in a, in a very moist, a humid atmosphere. It's kind of like when you deal with uh, hurricanes and whatnot. You don't tend to see a lot of lightning, per se. You will see heavy rain, for sure, and the risk of gusty wind. But that's usually the worst of it, as far as lightning goes. West of China Grove, west of Enochville, still some pretty heavy rain. There are the two lightning strikes that we're picking up on our lightning counter. Found them. And then as you work your way across the tornado-warned area, coming out of Mecklenburg County on into far northwestern portions of Cabarrus and southwest portions of Rowan, I'll put that warning up again. Again, this area, the flashing red box, that's under that tornado warning uh, un un uh, until 8.30 or so. And again, it, now it looks as if just in the last couple of moments that this, this hook, this little appendage is starting to weaken a little bit. Let's put this into motion. So we're going to analyze this together. I'm going to widen it out just a little bit. It looks like it peaked about five minutes ago, and now it is starting to weaken again. So these pulse up, they get strong, and then they weaken again. That, too, is not unusual uh, in a situation like this. Again, still, we've been checking in constantly with our colleagues at the National Weather Service. We've had no reports of any tornadic-like damage, but there has been some obviously very heavy rain. There's been some reports of trees down. I want to, again, quickly show you the, the rain that we've had. And again, this has become more of a flash flood issue than it, uh, I think, than it has been a uh, tornadic issue uh, because this, this really affects a more widespread area. This only goes back the last couple of hours. We've seen two to three plus inches from Denver to Mount Morn across the lake to Mooresville. That will cause flooding in an area that's very built up. And so that will exacerbate the street flooding potential for sure over the next little bit. I'm gonna turn the arrows off and again, go back to the radar and take a look inside. So there's the heavy rain, the area of greatest concern, why the tornado warning was issued, that little hook. It's still there, but again, elite, maybe in the middle part of the county, we're, we're, or should say middle part of the atmosphere, east of Caldwell, we're seeing, uh, again, the potential for some rotation, but this is gonna become more of a rainmaker. I understand there's a flash flood warning in effect. John, is that in effect for Mech? Yes, uh, it is in effect for Mech, Cabarrus, Iredell, and Rowan, and that is in effect throughout the night, overnight until about 1.45 in the morning as we watch this heavy rain continue. And we just had a report up near Mooresville, Johnson Dairy Road is where there's the potential where water is covering a bridge. So if you live up in that area, you need to be watching out very carefully. As we watch some of the rain rates that are coming out of this guy and I track this, we're looking at mainly rates we've seen about two to three inches of rain out of this particular spot east of 77. So that is going to cause more of a flooded concern, especially as those creeks will rise thinking about the Rocky River Creek up in that uh, Rocky River up in that spot and up around Rowan County also areas that we're going to have to watch very carefully. Now watching how these storms are moving and the bigger picture and when we can finally let our guard down here let's go to meteorologist Austin Cheney. Yeah and John hopefully after tonight we can let our guard down in terms of the severe weather potential. The atmosphere today already wasn't super conducive for severe weather but we have managed to get some strong thunderstorms that have been able to rotate. Let's talk big picture about the rest of the week. So water vapor imagery, you're able to see a couple different things on here. The grays and greens are showing us where we have a lot of moisture in the atmosphere. The brown over here is the dry air. We certainly don't have any of that. And then you can also see the swirl. That swirl is an area of low pressure, and it is going to be in absolutely no hurry to get out of here over the next few days. It's going to be the dominant feature in our weather through at least Wednesday or Thursday. And as it is so, it's going to be pumping in a tremendous amount of moisture right into our region from the south and southwest. So we've already got a flash flood warning out for uh, Mecklenburg County. We're probably going to see more flood warnings as we go through the next few days because this was just day one of this heavy rainfall. Now we're going to pile it on through at least Thursday or Friday with some scattered showers possible into the weekend. And you can see very quickly how we could end up in this potential flooding situation. The storms over the next few days, we should say goodbye to the severe weather threat, but the atmosphere is just going to be waterlogged. So when these storms develop... Allison and Michael have been in their home for 10 years. 
and their bathroom really needed an update. I like doing home projects. Would have definitely taken me longer than we have. They needed a more convenient option, so they called West Shore. The design consultant made it really easy. I left for work with the kids, and they showed up. Morning. Have a nice day at school. By dinner time, we had our bathroom. 